Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about stuff. I want you to tell me what your favorite cryptocurrency is and why other people should also be investing in it as well. This is probably some of the craziest news. I Listen, it's not often that I like I chuckle uh, when I'm alone uh, recording videos or like reading through the news and stuff like that. This one actually got me just because of like of what it actually means for the like the is is even repercussions the correct word i don't even know what this would mean for the rest of the space if you've been paying attention at any point over the course of the last couple of months you've noticed not only are things picking up price wise but also mentally for people within the space a lot of people, when prices go down or prices are trending sideways, they get depressed, they leave the market, they sell their coins, you name it. We had news, uh, maybe, a couple, I don't remember when it was, a couple days ago, that the actual uh, amount of retail investors is beginning to pick up back up in the market again. Like we're seeing like a small uptick in everyday normal people getting back into the market. Uh, the sad part there is that these people had an opportunity over the course of two years to get into the market and they chose not to when prices go down for some reason it doesn't make sense people that's when people leave the market as opposed to buying more it's similar to how we were just talking about that bitcoin at its low was sixteen thousand at this cycle and then you look at where it currently is right now the argument is that and has been since the beginning of the year and even it got strengthened in summer and heaven help us around September time, Q4, quarter four, where we currently are right now. It feels weird because we've been talking about it for so long. We go over this daily between this channel and the modern investor. It's like it's literally like one of the main topics that constantly pops up quarter four, October. November, December, if you missed the last video, the price predictions for Bitcoin in December are staggering. And I, I think I mentally, personally, I need to see these numbers to kind of like not have a sigh of relief, but also they've been, every analyst has been talking about the exact same thing. And it kind of where this is personal. It kind of like wears the mind down if everyone's talking about the same thing. But this isn't the first time because we've had this other cycles before. If you were here last cycle from 2020 and 2021, you remember what happened in 2020. We we, we didn't have a lot of hope for the market. I think I think didn't Bitcoin fall down to three thousand in 2020 based on all the events and things that were going on. Not a lot of hope as to where the market would go to, and then we end up hitting a brand new all-time high, and of course, everyone's very euphoric. So in most cycles, usually especially the year of the halving, we tend to have like a, a period of like, well, can this happen? And then it ends up happening, and then everyone's very euphoric. You get the idea. The analysts recently have mainly focused on Bitcoin. It makes a lot of sense. It's the number one coin. It moves the market. Every other coin can move independently wherever they want to go. Bitcoin goes down by 2%. Every other coin is going down with it. Coins can move wherever they want to go. Bitcoin goes up by 2 or 3%. The rest of the coins end up pushing up a lot higher as well. This pertains to Ethereum, and this is why I said I was chuckling before this. Because if this ends up coming true... You don't you don't under, you don't really understand what's about to take place. Every analyst, if you follow this channel and the other one, if you follow the news, every analyst says the exact same thing. My goodness. Quarter 4 where we are right now, by the time we get to the end of this year, the numbers are Bitcoin will be over 100,000 to around 155,000. We've seen 108,000 to 155,000. It was one that said 120,000. And I think we had one analyst who said 200K. I'll back away from that one simply because 200K is a very powerful number. 100,000 
to $150,000 by the end of this year. This analyst is talking about Ethereum. If this is your first cycle or if for some reason you forgot, Bitcoin has a strong hold on the market. Ethereum, however, is a magnet. If Ethereum does well, all the altcoins do well as well. It is a literal given. It's part of like the actual thing. And people forget it's because of the of the trading pairs on cryptocurrency exchanges. They're all tied to Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's the main thing. If Ethereum skyrockets, the altcoins you're holding are also going to do exceptionally well at the exact same time, if not better, percentage-wise. Is there, is there a name for this guy? Uh, usually there's like a... Uh, 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 someone called Julian Bittel, B-I-T-T-E-L. He's the head of macro research at Global Macro Investor. That's that's what it's called. He basically said that Ethereum is currently mirroring its pattern from 2023 and from other cycles, where we basically saw, especially at the end of last year, for those of you who don't remember, prices went low and then began to swoop back up as we got the, the Bitcoin ETFs. A lot of the news that we've been getting, if you want to give it like a proper time frame, is two and a half months before Bitcoin is supposed to hit 100K to $150,000. This guy says that Ethereum is following the exact same movements that it did during the other stages of its life. And he's giving this four months. So the other one is two and a half months of the course of quarter four. This guy's saying that by January... If it follows the same trajectory as he thinks that it's going to do, he said that by the end of January, Ethereum will be over $20,000 within the next four months. The reason why I chuckled or was telling you that I was chuckling, if Ethereum has a, first of all, Bitcoin also would need to have a rush up as well. That's the idea of the 155,000. Like, make no mistake, the recovery in the market would be exponential to a degree that your mind can't actually conceptualize. That's not a joke. If Bitcoin goes to 100, because people have been expecting in a seven, eight thousand dollar ether by the time we get to the end of the year or in you know quarter one of next year, the expectations are a twelve to a fifteen thousand dollar Ethereum by the end of 2025. That's the generalized idea. People think that we're actually in a super cycle, and it makes a lot of sense. Regardless of how much negative news there might be about Ethereum and Ethereum ETFs and the outflows that they're having, if you've been following this channel or the other one, third time that I'm saying it, the outflows are mainly coming from Grayscale, as we've seen before. The issue is is that if Grayscale has an outflow of $14 million, at the same time, there's an inflow of $33 million worth of Ether into the other ETFs. Ethereum is being bought up in, in, in such large quantities that I think the public can't really understand what's going on. Do you remember what I said when the Ethereum ETFs first launched? I don't know if you can find the video. Google it. Try and find the news somewhere. The first, I think it was two weeks. Do you remember the first two weeks that the Ethereum ETFs launched, what the video was about? Probably not. The amount of Bitcoin that gets created per day, I think is 450 Bitcoin per day. We heard the numbers before. It takes around 30 million US dollars to absorb the entire supply, the daily created supply of Bitcoin. That's why we were having so much news that these ETFs were buying eight times daily, 8x the amount of Bitcoin that was being created per day. That's huge. That's nothing to scoff at. The news was Ethereum is inflationary, but it's also deflationary at the exact same time. You need to have Ether to be able to create Ether. That's the way that it works. And as you have Ether and you're staking it, the amount of Ether being created obviously mathematically would go up. Ethereum also has a burn mechanism as people use the network, and it is the most used network on the planet. The coins burn. It's kind of an equilibrium, but more of a deflationary kind of nature. So coins get created, but at the same time, they're also burned, and it kind of creates an even flow in the middle. 
I forgot the exact number, but whatever. In the course of two weeks, remember, you know, the ETFs were buying eight times the amount of Bitcoin per day, seven times per day. In two weeks, the Ethereum ETFs purchased over a year and a half, a year and a half worth of the amount of Ethereum that would normally be created. That's why I think a lot of people were, a lot of Bitcoin maximalists particularly, were getting kind of like spooked of the idea of the Ethereum ETFs because mathematically they're outperforming the Bitcoin ones. Have any argument that you want to have. I know what the numbers actually are. From a standpoint of like supply, it's nearly like they're they're capturing all of it. Do you remember the numbers that we had in summertime? This is this is why I think the 20,000 makes so much sense. Do you remember the numbers that we had in summertime? I think it was 90% 90% of all Ethereum has been taken off of crypto exchanges. There's now less than 10% of all the Ether out there on exchanges, and that continues to decrease daily as we see more people taking their Ether off of it. And the last numbers that we got, it, was, it went from 25 to 33% of all Ether is now being staked. It's the same for Bitcoin. There's not a lot left for the, for the not even for the general public, but for 8 billion people on the planet. If we get to a $20,000 Ether by the end of January, we are going to be in a completely different world, my friends. You fail to grasp exactly how intense this market would be because from that point, we still have nine months left of the cycle. That would get us to a 30, 40, $5,000 Ether by the end of all of this because there's not a lot left. The supply squeeze is real. And this is what we've been experiencing over the last couple of years. It's insane. It's like it's actually insane to think about how like the other altcoins you I mean, because even if they if Ethereum goes to 20,000 and the other altcoins reach their previous all time high by the time we get to January, we then have nine months of continual movement upward within the market. I don't think anybody's ready for that. Like, actually. All right, I think that's going to do it for this video. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.